Hello and welcome. Today we have a very exciting webinar, uh, a Mountain Destinations Guide to Social Media, brought to you by BCV, a rate gain company. I'm incredibly uh, excited to welcome our panelists today, but before that, I just uh, would like to introduce myself. <laughs> um, I know we have a lot of returning uh, viewers, but I'm Kat Shaw, the Director of Marketing and Content for MTS. And for those of you who are signed up for our conference next week, you'll be seeing a lot of my face and hearing a lot of my, my voice next week as well. Uh, so for today's webinar, we have a couple of features that I wanted to make everyone aware of. As usual, we will have Q&A at the end of the webinar. You can submit your questions at any point in time via the Q&A feature, and we will uh, hold those questions till, till the end of the webinar, but at, at any moment when they pop up, uh, feel free to submit them and ask them. Uh, as some of you are already using the chat, which is great, and um, just make sure that if you are using the chat and you want everyone to see what you're saying, you change your chat to say panelists and attendees so that everyone can, um, can see the conversation that's going on in the chat. Uh, we'll ha we have a couple of polls to, uh, to share with you during today's webinar. So just make sure that you answer those polls and um, are an active participant of the webinar. And then lastly, there will be a survey at the end. So once the webinar concludes, a window will pop up in your browser and you can answer our post uh, webinar survey. So with that, I would like to welcome our panelists today. We have Mercedes Blanco, the Vice President of Sales Americas, Adriana Rack, the Sales Director, and Alex Slent, oh, also the Sales Director for BCV, a rate gain company. So welcome everyone. I'm going to hand it over to you to introduce yourselves to the audience and I will see you later. Thank you, Kat, and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be hosting this webinar and to get to talk more about social media, which is our main area of expertise. And um, I love mountain resorts. I think that during the pandemic, we all wanted to go back and enjoy nature. So this is wonderful that we are here today. Um, as mentioned, I'm Mercedes Blanco. I'm the VP of Sales here at BCB for the Americas. And today with me, we have the wonderful um, BCB team, not all of them, but the ones that cover the mountain region. Um, Adriana, Alex, why don't you introduce yourself very quickly? Sure, I'll start off. I'm Adriana. I'm here on the sales team. Um, I am based here in Chicago and I am um, overseeing part of the mountain region. And I am Alex Talent. I am based in Las Vegas. Um, I have an intimate connection with MTS. I was at the South Lake Tahoe conference a couple of years ago, and I managed the uh, the Tahoe region for for my former company. Uh, excited to be here. Yeah, we will uh, we'll have a great time today and, and have a great chat. So uh, look forward to to hearing and seeing how everything goes. Wonderful, Kat. Back at you, or should we start with the presentation? Yes, go ahead, Mercedes. <laughs> Wonderful. So then let me go and share my screen so you all can follow. Just so you know, we are going to do like a very, very quick introduction about VCV and social media. And then Kat and I, we will be having like a, a conversation, an interview to get to know more about social. So just give me one second while I am sharing my screen here. There you go, and allow me to click presentation mode. Perfect, so now you all should be seeing my screen. Again, thank you uh, for joining us today. Um, as mentioned, we are gonna talk about mountain destination and social media. Uh, obviously, you already met the team, myself, Adriana and Alex, and uh, know that Adriana and Alex will be the ones coming back at the end to answer any questions that you may have, okay? So uh, please don't be shy, ask any questions on the Q&A uh, for the panelists, because we will be taking our time answering to all of your requests. So remember, we have enabled the chat, 
Please, sir, uh, any, any thoughts, any comments, any questions for us to answer later. But first, let's talk about who we are. Maybe some of you have heard about BCB. Maybe this is uh, new for you. But we've been in business for almost 10 years now. Uh, we are part of the Ray Game family. Uh, but the, all we do as BCB business unit is social media for the hospitality industry. Basically, we work with every other major hotel chain and event uh, independently owned hotel, boutique or not, luxury or not. And of course, we do have a lot of uh, great uh, partners within the mountain and ski resorts. Um, over the years, we've partnered with plus 300 different brands in the US alone. And one of our key differentiators is that we are the only uh, social media partner that helps you with monitoring 24-7 real time. Uh, what does it mean is that we are the only company that helps you with the different three components components of social media. If you think about social media, and I'll ask this question later, uh, you can choose doing in-house, right? Or you can uh, choose to go with a third party agency, maybe with a PR firm, or maybe even hire a technological uh, company to support you with all the planning, et cetera, et cetera. But if you go with uh, any of those directions, you're always going to be missing some pieces, okay? Because if you go in-house, you are going to be lacking maybe time. If you go with a technological partner, you are lacking strategy. And if you go with a PR firm, they are great with the strategy, but maybe they won't have the technology. We combine the three. We help you with your content strategy. We develop custom strategies for each of our properties. We develop the content also for them, which is very important and unique in social media because uh, your website content is not the same that you should be leveraging in social media. And we'll talk more about that later on. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, we do provide a 24 seven response through social media. It's like your PMS at the hotel level, right? You have your front desk team, you manage your check-in with a human. We do the same. We have our own technology and we have individual conversations with your guests to make them feel listened to and taken care of, which is all what we want. Because let's face it, we, we give them their dreams, their experiences, and we need to uh, provide that experience through social as well. And of course, last but not least, we do provide the analytics and reporting. So with all of that, it makes BCB the right uh, speaker for this um, interview or presentation today. So enough about BCB. I know that you did not sign today to hear me talking about the company. You wanted to hear about social media. And let's start talking about the new guest in 2021, okay? Uh, no secret, no surprise. 2020 was a nightmare for you, for me, for all of us in the hospitality industry. It was crazy. And now it's been over a year and we are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Although I know that certain destinations are doing better than others, right? Obviously, none of us imagined that we were going to go through this or that this was going to be so big. Who could have guessed, right, that the world would have stopped traveling, right? Um, but uh, today, um, we put our health first. A lot of things have changed, and we've changed our habits, our way of traveling, our way of behaving, even with our friends and family. And of course, uh, travel follows, right? Uh, whenever we are thinking about traveling, we put our health first. First, uh, we are going to demand accountability. We are going to ask for information. And of course, we are turning more and more to social media to ask for that information. In this slide here with me, you have three stats. One says that over 4 billion people are now active in social media. And why is that? Because we took away the option to be talking to or spending time in person with our loved ones. And we turn into social media to mitigate that um, human aspect that we all needed, right? So we saw an increase of social media users during the pandemic that has stayed with us today. Still, today, 15% uh, of, of our time, we are gonna spend it on social media from all of the time that we are gonna spend on, on digital. Also, according to Google, 
89% of travelers are using nowadays social media to dream. This, this uh, percentage has increased. Before the pandemic, it was 75. Now it's almost at 90%. Imagine how social media is impacting that decision of future travelers about going or not going to your property, right? And last but not least, this is according to Expedia, online spending is expected to top to 9 100 billion this year. This is more than one third of consumers say social uh, channels have become important in their buying journey, right? So let's not forget that social media has benefited from the COVID impacts, just, just to, to share some stats. So this is very important to keep in mind. Meanwhile, we are going to talk about how to have a social media strategy for your properties. And before jumping into the, the interview portion of, of today's webinar, I wanted to bring a couple of successes with, with me today, a couple of BCB partners with um, COVID examples. And um, the first one that I wanted to present to you is Grand Hyatt Vail. Not surprised that Colorado has killed it, right? I'm, I'm sure that we have some Colorado guests in the room. Hopefully we do. If so, please raise your hand in the chat. But here we have a BCB partner that um, had a unique advantage, right? And the, your unique advantage is their destination, their property itself, all of the outdoor activities that they had because they had something that some other properties in New York were lacking. What is that? space. They had the space. So what we did is we wanted to emphasize all of that space, all of that outdoor recreation activities that were available at the property, like hiking, for instance, and we wanted to position Hyatt Vale as the perfect COVID-friendly escape, either for winter, summer, whatever that is. But it was it was safe because we had that space, that social media distance. And, and because of that, we launched a campaign between July and October that uh, leverage all of those uh, social media formats that we know that are performing better, like Canvas and Collection. We wanted to capture the attention of future travelers and basically make them booked. And what we saw, look at the results here at the bottom. We have um, a high return on investment. We we have uh, 44k unique users reach, and uh, we have almost a thousand website clicks here uh, on on the on the actual offer. So this was this was a great success, and uh, there is no reason why you should not be the next having a successful campaign on social media. Um, of course, Colorado has done incredibly well, but let's talk about a, another VCB partner. And this is Four Seasons Jackson Hole, um, close to uh, Yellowstone, actually. I've, I was fortunate enough to have enjoyed this property not so long ago, um, and I have to go back to Colorado, actually. So this is, again, similar situation, okay? As mentioned, COVID has changed our behaviors. Uh, don't know about you, but it has changed mine. And we wanted to, again, garner awareness and basically drive bookings because all the social media, it's, yes, in the upper funnel, it's, it's impacting that, that dreaming phase. Also, we can impact in the booking stages as well in the lower funnel, right? Because social media has something very unique. We cover all of the different three funnels, upper, medium, and low, although the main purpose obviously is going to be always the upper funnel, right? And again, the stats here are awesome, really high return on spend, really high unique reach, and really high website clicks. So those properties uh, were doing very well in social media and, and business-wise. And of course, I'm sure that some of you have had some hard times, some others maybe not so much. Um, winter season is over and we are here to welcome the spring. There is no reason why you should not see um, really um, high numbers during the spring and summer because let's face it, you have everything that everyone is looking for right now. Space, freedom, COVID responsibility, activities, and um, wonderful products. So now, uh, Kat, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here, and we can maybe uh, start with the poll and um, start having some real interaction with the audience and kick uh, the interview off. Yes, great. So uh, thank you very much for all that information. And uh, with that, I'm going to launch our first poll 
we'd love to know a little bit about what the companies in the audience um, have as far as their, uh, you know, social media strategy, whether it's documented or not, or perhaps it's, you know, kind of sort of documented, um, but, you know, changes around sometimes here, here and there. So uh, please fill out that poll and we will share the uh, share the results shortly. What do you, what do you think, Mercedes? What do you think the answer is going to be here? Um, honestly, this is going to be a revelation because most of my hotelier friends, they, they say, uh, when I ask them this question is, yes, I have it covered. I have a wonderful intro that does social media for us. And it's like, no, 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 that's not exactly what I was uh, talking to. So let's, let's see what the audience is saying. And uh, maybe there you go, sort off. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so we kind of have a split here between uh, the majority of people say sort of, so that's good. You know, at least uh, strategy is something that everyone's thinking about. And and then the next step is 40% say, yes, they do have a documented social media strategy. So that's great. So um, we can, we'll talk a little bit more about some best practices for your social media strategy. And hopefully that 18% of you who's, who don't have uh, a strategy, you, you will also learn uh, a lot more on today's webinar. So with that, I'd like to uh, dive into my first question for you, Mercedes. Travelers are itching to explore the world and, you know, get back out there. Um, how does, how is social media going to help hoteliers, destinations, and resorts achieve their, their goals for, um, you know, enticing travelers to pick their, their destination or their property? Well, as I mentioned during the presentation, we have seen one, an increase on social media usage, right? Because we need to feel connected. Two, we've seen an increase on research for future travel plans, like uh, that 89% of people going to social for inspiration, right? And three, don't know about you, Kat, but I, I needed a vacation and I took a vacation last week, as you know, right? <laughs> we are all um, really looking forward to travel now. So there is another third increase, the increase of um, a travel desire, right? So with all of those three things uh, combined together and being on a rise, we now see that social media can indeed help with um, giving them the right expectations on what to expect, right? Obviously, now people, yes, they are um, looking to their next getaway, to where to go, but they are researching and informing themselves much more than ever before. Why? Because, because of fear, because of uncertainty, and because of that reason, flexibility and safety are super incredibly important for our travelers, no matter where we are, here in the States or overseas. And because of, tra because of information being something super important these days, social media can help any hotel, not only mountain resorts, but, but obviously this particular uh, segment as well, uh, they are gonna, social media is gonna be able to offer the travelers information and communication about what is it that is happening. I remember at the beginning in June, the questions were like, are you open? Because who knows, right? Uh, we, we did not know who uh, what hotel was open, which one wasn't. What are your COVID measures? Are your activities still open? What are your um, uh, specific measures that you are taking for activities? Maybe we need to book activities in advance. And if I am making a trip to, let's say, um, any of the hotels that I mentioned during the presentation, Four Seasons or Hyatt, and I want to go hiking, I don't want to miss my spot. So maybe I'll use social media to ask all of those questions because that is information is more likely not going to be available on OTAs or even on their website. So you had mentioned um, that more people are using social media now to, to get information. And I know, you know, my mom always says, oh, I'm not on social media. Like that's your generation's thing. What are you seeing in regards to activity related to uh, demographics on social media? Is it still primarily, you know, millennials and, and Gen Z or, or what does that look like? 
Not really. It really depends on the platform itself. I remember like a couple of years ago, I keep telling everyone that Twitter is where you could find uh, older generations. But now um, they are using Facebook more and more these days. Um, they are not early adopters. They need to trust the system. They needed to trust social media. And even my mom now, she's even getting herself into Instagram, mainly to follow me, but She's there, right? Um, but it is true that um, we are seeing more and more people in social media, regardless of the generation. The main question that you have to ask yourself is, who's my travel audience? Who's my travel persona? And where I need to be at if I want to communicate to that, that audience? Like in any, any marketing strategy, you need to understand uh, where your, your ideal persona is so you can communicate yourself properly in, in, in that place. Uh, obviously, let's not, let's not forget that even if your property now um, or traditionally was targeting older generations, so let's not talk about old because they are fully vaccinated by now, right? Like need. Right, they're the uh, ones, yeah, traveling. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so I think that the gap now is the the the, the need tier um, in in um, in age, right? Because millennials, since day one, they were ready to travel. They did not fear the consequences, right? So let's also not forget that they are the first to get back in the roads. Mm -hmm. Right. So what are you seeing? Um, you showed us some success stories. What are you seeing as be best practices and what's working for hotels and, and ski resorts, particularly right now um, in terms of, I'm going to have this be a little bit of a two-part question. Uh, what's working in terms of their uh, messaging and content that's engaging people. And so we'll start with that and then I'll, I'll ask the, the, other, the other part. Perfect. Uh, well, it really depends uh, if we are thinking about the hotel or the property side or the social media side, okay? If we are thinking from the hotel side, there has been no better moment to talk about your attributes, to talk about your exclusivity. Actually, the, the luxury tiers have benefited a lot uh, lately because they, they could sell that safety exclusivities that they were offering to clients. So um, any mountain resort has that. A ski or not, um, spa or not, you have like a, a lot of space, a lot of um, um, hiking, a lot of golfing, a lot of activities that are safe. So thinking about your attributes as a property and really highlighting those. And then from the social perspective is leveraging content. I mentioned it in the presentation and that's a handicap that I see every day in my life. It's like, oh, Mercedes, I have more content than enough to use in social media. I'll use the same that I have on the website. It's like, no, 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 you are not listening to me. Social media is not a website. I don't go to social to see static pictures. I go to social to see your property alive, to see what it looks like. And it, it's about having that mirror yourself effect. I wanna picture me there. And for that reason, I wanna see photos with hands, with backs, where I think that I am there enjoying those, or I wanna see a story going into hiking. I want to see all of that. So we need to also use the content and all of the new social media features that, that we have out there. It's also important uh, for, for a best practice perspective to think about um, the travel habits changes. Before, we used to book within X period of time. Now that window of booking has shrunk drastically. And we need to target our messages accordingly to be able to maximize the returns. Okay. So definitely as far as content goes, different content for different platforms and different, different digital mediums. So the second part of my question is what are some best practices and what are you seeing work in order to grow social media presence? I think we, we know that, um, you know, the mountain resorts are a place that a lot of people are looking to because of wide open spaces and probably a lot of people who would have picked a, you know, beach destination or a city destination or a long haul destination before that maybe are completely new clients to the mountains. So how, how do you grow um, your social media 
presence and how do you retain that audience? That is a very good question. And I believe that this is a very big area of opportunity for any mountain destination at this point. Reason why is because loyalty is gonna be key during the post pandemic era, okay? But we cannot survive with loyal clients only. We have to engage new generations too. And those new generations tend to be more active on social media. Think about those millennials being able to get back in the road ASAP, right? Millennials before, maybe they were thinking about going to city destinations or even urban or, or beaches, as, as you just mentioned, right? But right now, um, we've seen that increase on outdoor and natures. And um, I think that if you are really understanding what your property needs, and you are able to hyper-target all of your campaigns and content, not only in social media, but generally speaking, if, if you are really defining who your audience is and you are going to that particular person, um, you can grow your, not only your social media presence, but your, your, your bookings, your engagements so quickly that you would not believe it. Actually, just to share some, some other stats with you, Pinterest reported a spike in nature and destination search uh, of 35% year over year when searching mountain travel and 100% increase for forest resort, okay? Because again, the way we are thinking about traveling has changed. And all of these mountain destinations, they have everything within their power to, to leverage that. I think that they have, a unique opportunity now to open and amplify their reach. For instance, if you are a, let's say, traditional resort with a lot of old folks going to golf, now you can amplify to millennials, not only to generate a better reach and better engagement into social media, but to better survive in the future. Because let's face it, maybe people over 75, they are not always gonna be there for you. But millennials, they are going to get older, right? So we have to get ahead of the curve and be ahead of the game if we want to succeed as a destination. And I think that right now, like what Colorado has done over the past few months is what every single one of us should be doing. Mm. I think that's really, really interesting. Uh, an interesting concept of using social media for, for long-term loyalty. Uh, I, I also will, uh, we can come back to this later, but I think it's very interesting that you mentioned Pinterest because I would bet that a lot of our audience does not think of Pinterest as um, a social media uh, platform that is necessarily, you know, top in, in where they should be focusing. Um, and that is not uncommon, Kat, because the problem with Pinterest that is very, please excuse me, Pinterest, if you're listening, but um, <laughs> um the problem with them is that it's very hard to track a return on investment, right? And um, forgive me for saying this as well, our industry, and I am very proud to belong of this industry, and I started my career in hotels myself, right? But we are not on top of things. We are a little bit prehistoric. And we have started to do social media when it was maybe a little bit too late in the game, right? So I, I am saying this because if you think about this and who has the ultimate decision on whether to invest or not in social media, and we can talk about budget also, um, I think that the question is always, okay, but what is that I am going to get, right? What is social media bringing me? And there is a misconception of return on investment thinking, okay, social media is not an OTA, so I'm not going to invest much on it but you, you are forgetting all of the implications on the way. And the same with, with, with Pinterest, right? If you have to prioritize right now, Facebook and Instagram are the ones that are killing it, are the ones that are leading uh, the, 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 the presence of our hoteliers. Instagram is only natural because it's the more visual with um, and, and more experiential, if you wish. So it's only natural that properties tend to be more present in social media on Instagram, right? But there is much more. It really depends on the property, who you are and your product and your audience to choose where you have to be, right? Um, I always recommend to be on Pinterest if you are very strong within weddings, for instance. Same mm -hmm. way that I recommend that you are active on Twitter if you are very strong within conferences. 
So it, it really depends. Right. That now, uh, because we're having this conversation right now, I'm, I'm going to um, jump into some questions that have been submitted in a conversation that's going on in the panel, because I think it's really interesting based on what you just said. Um, TikTok is like the new social media thing. Uh, I myself as a millennial, like I, I haven't gotten there yet, right? Um, and you mentioned that the, the hospitality and the travel industry, we tend to be a little bit behind. So we have some um, participants asking what your thoughts are on TikTok and if, you know, if people should be there as far as having a social media presence. Yes and no. Um... I would say for anybody asking me to be on TikTok, I would ask them this. Are you asking TikTok because it's hot or are you asking TikTok because you're ready for TikTok, right? Uh, because sometimes we, we keep hearing things like, oh, TikTok is the next thing. We have to be on it. Okay, but wait a minute. Do you have a structured social media strategy? Almost 60% of the audience here says uh, no or short talk. So... First, let's define your social media strategy to identify if you should be there or not. I, I think that TikTok is very powerful, especially if we are talking about um, branding from the brand perspective, right? I mean, if you are an independently owned hotel with 200 rooms and uh, not a lot of budget and you ask me where to invest it, I would say, okay, be careful because either you are going to be the most creative hotel in the whole world and do very well on TikTok, or maybe that's not the place for you to be. I, I, I think that TikTok for those hotels still in, in, in testing, uh, but I, I think that there are a lot of conversations that we need to ask about the property and their strategy before talking about whether if they should be or not in TikTok. Do I like TikTok? Definitely, yes. Do I think that it's going to be a uh, leading change? Of course, I mean, maybe maybe two years from today, we are talking about, I don't know, tabletop or whatever it is. I don't know if you heard about Clubhouse, yeah, right? right. Mm -hmm. A lot of these apps. And, and one thing that we have seen is like, maybe when our parents were my age, companies tended to leave for maybe 50 years, leaving the market, right? That leaving um, uh, aging, has been reduced drastically since the internet started. And if you think about social media itself, this is very new. The other day I was talking to friends and I'm like, okay, maybe I have some pictures on Facebook. I'm like, wait a minute, Facebook didn't exist back then. So where do I find those pictures now, right? We tend to assume that social media has been always here with us because it's so normal, so natural now. But we, Pinterest was, revolutionary back then so was instagram now it's tiktok let's mm -hmm. see what it's going to happen in two years so if we are not um the most advanced just because we have a new kid in the blog doesn't mean that we have to invest on it let's let's first redefine and strategize things first okay so don't just be there to be there be there with a strategy and a plan and and make it effective so uh, I hope that was helpful for those in the, the audience that were asking. And uh, just to chew my own horn, I have been invited to Clubhouse. I don't know about you, Mercedes, but maybe maybe our next webinar will be all about Clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I am lacking time to be on Clubhouse as much as I should. <laughs> So uh, I, I'd like to launch our next poll here, and um, we've got a lot of activity in the chat, and we, we want to know who, um, uh, you know, who we have with us in the audience, as well as who manages the uh, social teams for for your brands and for your companies. Um, as as Mercedes mentioned before, you know, sometimes social is something that is given given to an intern, you know, is overseen. Um, by sales and marketing. Um, sometimes it's in-house, you know, sometimes it's, it's um, you know, last on the totem pole and so there isn't much budget for it. And maybe that's changed for you during the pandemic, you know, um, maybe your, your team has shifted and it's, and social media is something that's fallen by the wayside because of, you know, a change in resources. Um, so we've got, um, and share this here and, not too surprising, the majority of um, the audience, the, the you know, sales and marketing is where social media falls. So um, with that, I'd like to ask uh, what, 
what are your thoughts and how, how can working with a company like BCV be, you know, an extension of a marketing team because it, it's it, versus working, like you mentioned with um, an agency that maybe it will, you know, do a portion of it or, you know, how, how, how are you a partner to an existing social media team or marketing team? First thing that I like to say is, is time. I mean, before, during, and after COVID, time is a luxury that none of us have, right? Um, especially if you are within sales and marketing at the property level. And believe me, I've been there. When you are in sales, uh, in a property, and you've been tasked to do social media, you have a bunch of other priorities in your plate and your plate is full. And if you have an RFP coming from a group, you are gonna prioritize that or a house uh, inspection rather than posting things on social media. So the first thing that we bring with us is, is helping them uh, taking all of that weight out of their shoulders, right? Without, um, without just taking them aside, right? Um, I think that we bring other three things with us. Obviously one and most important is expertise, right? We are social media experts. Not only uh, we bring an account that works exclusively with a, a handful number of properties, but they are supported by copywriters, people that knows how to put things beautiful in writing, right? Mm -hmm. We are supported by people that understands the algorithm of social media. Uh, how putting one thing one way or the other is going to affect your performance on social media. We have graphic designers, videographers, photographers that are going to maximize your attributes as a property to search for the best results for you. Because at the end of the day, our goals are going to be our partner goals. We are here to support them and not the other way around. So we bring that expertise. We bring the dedication. And um, not only that, we are on top of of, of everything, of the news, the trends, deficiencies. And yes, if time comes for you to be on TikTok or any other social media platform, we're gonna defer saying, hey, um, have you think about that? Uh, we believe that this is gonna benefit you because of X, Y, and Z, right? So that is one. The other one is monitoring. There is no way, and I say this very proudly because I know that it is true, no way that no one could be on social media 24 seven real time, meaning, Okay, you have your property profile on Facebook. Wonderful. What if I text you now? I take my phone and I text you something. Who's going to see that? And when is going to respond to that? Okay. Even if you have a fully dedicated person, that person eats, sleep, has days off. So there is going to be always a delay. And social media exists because of action reaction. When you ask in social media, it's because you want that answer in real time. So we can help you with that as well. We, we bring that 24 seven in real time. And not only that, let's not forget that social media is the best CRM of the whole world. All of us have been willingly sharing things about ourselves. So when I am posting or asking something as Mercedes Blanc online, what we can do through our technology is also know who Mercedes Blanco is as a traveler. So when we respond to me in this case, we do that knowing the information that the property needs to give me, but also to propose probably something that is unique to me. Like for instance, um, I, I have a puppy. Um, he loves to walk and run in the outdoors. So maybe if the property knows about my beautiful golden, they would offer me a pet-friendly getaway in beautiful whatever, right? So it's about personalization, not only responding in real time, but personalizing the answer, really talking to me. I don't want to talk to a machine. I'm tired of that, right? And last but not least, obviously, strategy, okay? We are always going to think about what is it that we can do to help you with your ROI, with your awareness? What if you have, I don't know, a fire? How are we going to react to a social media crisis about a fire? Or what about discrimination, right? We are equipped to help you mitigate any positive or negative uh, impact that social media may have in your property. Mm -hmm. 
I love what you said about the personalized response because um, that is key and it's it's something that takes time and effort. And I, I would bet a lot of uh, marketing teams don't have the manpower to kind of craft that man or woman power, sorry, excuse me, um, to craft that, you know, personalized response, but it, it is, you know, very important. So what are some of the um, key metrics that brands and that, that, you know, marketing personnel should be looking at to gauge the success of the campaigns that they're running? Um, and, and this may differ on, on plat different platforms or it, it may, you know, there may be a couple of key things across the board. So I am going to answer with what you should not be looking at. And that is fun. Okay. Because I always, uh, I'm asked the same question. It's like, okay, how can you help me grow with my fans? Uh, and it's like, okay, wait a minute. I don't think that you fully understand. Yes, fan base is important, but would you rather have a million of people ignoring you or a thousand people really talking about you and really caring about going and visiting you, okay? I have a lot of hotels that came to me because they have a really, what well, they believe that it's a healthy fan base of hundreds of thousands of followers, but they have little engagement, meaning that they don't care. They are bored, they don't follow, they don't listen. What we need to do is to increase the engagement. And of course, I mean, this is a ratio, right? I mean, we want to increase funds, but we want to do it in a way that it, it's relevant to the property. And that's how we should be looking at the picture, right? Increasing engagement means that we are increasing the right audience for your property. And um, that's what you all want. So obviously engagement is top of the funnel, right? But um, that should be one of the things that you should be looking at very, very closely by prioritizing comments, shares, um, any, anything that people is doing to interact with you. Obviously, we can look at clicks. That's one step further. That's when I am taking more interest. I am seeing something and I am clicking to get to see more. That means that I am even more interested. And of course, social media has changed drastically over the years. We no longer can be successful in social without investing some dollars behind it, meaning without investing in paid media. Um, why? Because that way you can talk to who you really want to talk to and also because of the algorithms. That's how they are prioritizing content now, right? And uh, when I say paid, I don't mean, hey, book here. Maybe I'm using paid to help your awareness, help your engagement. It really depends on the, sorry, excuse me, on the goals, right? But I mean, paid should be part uh, of, of the conversation always and ultimately conversion, like um, click-throughs, uh, to book, call to actions, um, CPAs, all of that um, benchmarks are very important. But the, the first thing that we need to look at is, is engagements and, and interaction really. Mm -hmm. So um, I, again, just looking at the chat here, we've got some great conversation going on and I'd, I'd like to have you weigh in on user generated um, content. So, right, it's, it's no surprise that people are hiking and posting, you know, gorgeous views. People are, are out um, on various runs and taking videos of themselves and how much should, destinations and resorts be relying on user-generated content in their social media strategy? That is a very good question. I say that if you have good quality UGC, use it, leveraging. Why? Because it helps your trust. It helps you build that credibility because it's no longer you talking about yourself. It's like my husband talking about me. He's not gonna be fair. He's gonna hopefully say good things about me, right? <laughs> But if it's uh, maybe uh, my neighbor, they don't have to be nice and to say good things about me. If they do, it's because they want to. Same with UGC. So leveraging that is always powerful, but you cannot rely on exclusively going with UGC. Actually, and even during the pandemic, people in social media, they've been more open to uh, produce content because they understood that the properties, and this applies not only to our hospitality industry too, but to all of the industries, 
uh, people is, is kind of become more open to receive uh, produce or sponsor content from the brands. Before they were like, mm, this may be fake. Now it's the opposite because they were specifically for us, they were looking for that um, transparency, for that communication. So proactively communicating about your property, everything that you were doing was key. And uh, still today, I remember myself back in summer last year, I have a lot of friends telling me, oh, Mercedes, I'm sure that you have no, no work at all. <laughs> I mean, no one is traveling. It's like, what the heck do you mean? I mean, I've never been busier in my life, right? I mean, people, specifically hotels, they should have stayed on during the pandemic to communicate to their travelers on social media. So um, I don't have the secret recipe of success on perform, uh, on on specifics on on um, percentages, how right. much you see, how much your content. That really depends on what kind of content do you have to start with, right? So again, every the beauty about social media is that it has to be customized for your property. So it really depends on the property, but I do say that using UGC is very important. Yeah, and uh, you know, we've, we've got some comments in the chat that are agreeing with you that it you know, humanizes a brand and that the, the, those users uh, you know, really enjoy being shared on, um, on the various brands and that, that kind of creates trust and loyalty. So uh, a lot of our marketing professionals here would ag agree with your statement. So um, we were, we're actually um, running down to the wire on time. And I know we've been having a great conversation. I'd like to uh, launch one more poll before we bring Alex and Adriana back up for um, Q&A. So, um, and, and this, this will be in order to kind of help us with the Q&A perhaps. So uh, what area of social media does your company or brand need the most help with? Measuring success, community management and support, content and advertising strategy, all of the above. Uh, so as we are collecting the results here, I think um, my guess is that it would be all of the above. You know, there's a lot wrapped into social media. I don't know what your thoughts are um, or what you find typically Mercedes is where people need the most help. It, again, it really depends, but I will tell you this, Kat, I am surprised to see wonderful properties with wonderful content, but um, receiving a lot of comments and interaction and no one responding. So mm -hmm. basically ignoring them, right? So I've seen that a lot. Um, but again, I mean, content has been a piece that um, for some reason tends to be overlooked. I don't know why, maybe because we feel like we have enough and we can reuse it and save some money. But um, developing social media content is not that expensive. It's not like doing like a photo suit with a, with a PR firm for a famous magazine. It's, it's totally different, I'll tell you that. So we're kind of all over the map here. We've got uh, our, our largest contingent is needs help with all of the above, followed by measuring success, uh, content and advertising strategy, and then last community management and support. Well, so I, I am not happy to say that um, so much help is needed, but that's why we exist. So don't be shy. Feel free to reach out at any time and we'll be super happy to give you a hand. So we have about 10 minutes left for questions and I'd like to bring Adriana and Alex back up and we have a handful of questions that have been submitted. So um, if we do not get to all of them, um, Mercedes and her team will, will be able to respond directly to, um, to those who ask questions. So I'm going to start off with our first question. And um, this goes back to the conversation we we're having a little bit before about various platforms. Uh, if we, you've got a very small team, where should, what platform should we be focusing on? And, um, you know, is that different for, for property? Is that um, maybe specific to the travel industry where she, where um, we should be focused for small organizations that, that don't have a lot of resources. 
I'll be very honest. Um, and again, every property is different. And I am sorry that I keep saying this, but assuming that all of you are properties within mountain destinations, right? You have beautiful outdoors, right? Um, I would say Instagram and Facebook, the two together, okay? Why? Instagram, again, is the most visual and it can help you with your um, communication. But let's not forget that not every generation is on Instagram. So Instagram may look like the more appealing to the eye from our perspective as professionals, but that might not be the best for your audience. For that, I say also Facebook, because Facebook counterbalance the lack of older folks within Instagram, if that makes sense, okay? Mm -hmm. Again, I am overgeneralizing right now, but if you are asking me, I say those two are a must. Adriana and Alex, any, any different opinions or observations? To your point, Mercedes, I think there's quite a few different platforms out there and understanding, I think, who your customer is and where they lie is the first piece of that question. Um, in terms of how BCV looks at platforms, typically there's three that we focus on primarily, um, that being Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So to Mercedes' point, Facebook typically has the best opportunity um, to generate revenue. Um, Instagram, we consider the most visually driven and has some of that dreamy inspirational content, very visual, looking for the video content. And then Twitter, typically you have the opportunity to um, handle some customer service opportunities. So not necessarily as visually driven, but still a very key part of your overall strategy um, to make your guests and potential guests feel heard and understood um, and communicated with. I, I think you make a great point, Adriana. I, I know that there are lots of times where someone will, you know, can't get a hold of someone on a customer service line, but they send a tweet and they've got their, you know, problem solved, right? <laughs> um, so that, that's very, a very important use of Twitter that I see all the time that I, I don't know if everybody is leveraging that. Yeah. Um, so Moving on to our next question, and, and again, this dovetails with the conversation we had earlier about authenticity. And how, how do you feel about influencer marketing and kind of that, you know, the, the hype and, and the, is it a fad? Um, and, you know, especially around traveling, I think there are a lot of travel influencers and how, how much stock should, um, should marketers put into that as a, as a channel? Um, I think influencer marketing is important as long as you use it correctly. Uh, Cause once you have someone in an influencer world who starts to market your property, you are now kind of tied to them. So if they have something that happens that negatively impacts their reputation, that could have a, a, a drastic impact on yours. So I think in the right environment and the right, uh, the right context, is, it's very good to use uh, social media influencers, but you also have to, to be careful and make sure that you're, you're using them sparingly. Um, one thing about influencers is when they come to property, they're going to let you know that they're there. They're going to post. You're always going to know. So that's where uh, a lot of properties will repost uh, social media influencers posts that just come up on their property because that is a, a version of, of free advertising. Um, but there is always that, uh, that asterisk you put on there that says um, you're tied to, tied to them if you kind of, kind of hit your horse to that wagon, you gotta be a little bit careful. Um, but it is important, it is something that's gonna drive clicks, there will be revenue generated from it, uh, but they're just a, a little word of caution there. Thanks, Alex. Any additional thoughts on that question? I will only add that if for some reason you choose to hire the services of an influencer, which I recommend by the way, is to follow all of the best practices, because if not, it can become a problem as well. I've seen a lot of um, social media posts that did not disclose that it was a paid contribution and that caused a lot of problems in the future as well. Yeah. Okay. So pr proceed with caution. Uh, so our, our next question is, um, that 
this audience member has seen really great engagement on Facebook and with their Facebook following, but not as much with Instagram. And so what's the best way to leverage the Facebook audience to grow your Instagram audience? Or are, are those perhaps two audiences that should be kept separate? Um, I can, I'll jump in on that. Uh, I think um, there's a word of caution that Mercedes already mentioned is just because you have a lot of followers doesn't mean you have a lot of engaged followers, right? So it's very important to not necessarily focus as much on having 100,000 followers as, as it would be very important to have 10,000 very active uh, followers. Um, there's also the algorithm that works within Facebook and Instagram that only one to three percent of your followers will see your posts when you have a, a business generated profile. So making sure that you have that ad spend and, and some boosting um, options to, to boost so your followers are do see your property top of mind is going to be important. Um, Facebook and Instagram, I think they're kind of hand in hand as far as having the audience. But again, there's the audience that's on Facebook that might not necessarily be on Instagram. Um, but I think both of them are important. Uh, when you have a great Instagram post, you're going to tag it on Facebook anyways. So you're going to have some, some bleeding over uh, from there. So uh, it's important that you're, you're, you're kind of targeting the same kind of audiences with both, but understanding that the, the visuals, uh, different people are going to see it based on where you post. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, we've got one more question here uh, on a platform, a social platform that we haven't talked much about. Um, but what are your thoughts on YouTube and specifically, you know, for, for a destination, um, leveraging YouTube in social strategy? I like to jump in there just to clarify the YouTube should not be considered a social media platform per se. Okay. And why? Explain that. Well, two things mainly. Um, social media, it's defined by communication, conversation, mm -hmm. right? YouTube, it's more like you talking. Mm -hmm. Yes, people can comment on your videos, but that's it. There is limitation on the interaction that you can um, have on the platform itself. So um, we like to differentiate YouTube from social media, same way that we differentiate review platforms like TripAdvisor or any other review platform from social media as well, because the interaction is, is totally different. Having said that, um, if you have content, you have to leverage it. If you have a YouTube channel, why not? But again, it, it, it has to be tied with a really strong marketing strategy. Okay. I, you know, that makes perfect sense as you explain that um, because it's not really social, it's just media. Uh, but um, I don't know, I don't know if I've ever thought of it differently and thought of it like that. So, um, so we, we are just at the top of the hour. So uh, I really uh, appreciate the conversation today with BCV and everyone in the audience. Uh, we had so, so many uh, questions submitted and a lot of conversation in the chat, which was great to see. And a lot of people, you know, sharing what's worked for them um, and, and what hasn't with their colleagues in the mountain tourism. So uh, we really appreciate everyone tuning in and we want to thank Mercedes, Adriana and Alex. Um, we will, I will be back uh, next week at MTS for those of you who are registered. Uh, there is still time to register for the forum for just $95. Um, and I know that Adriana and Alex will be joining us uh, for the exchanges at MTS. So we hope to see everyone next week. And thank you so much for your time, everyone. Thank you, Kat. Just before we go, just very quickly, I wanted to say something that I saw in the chat that I loved. Quality over quantity. Yes, <laughs> that is super important. And um, I also wanted to thank you, thank uh, the organization for inviting us. And of course, we'll be there with you next week. And for any unanswered questions that um, we may have had in the chat or in the Q&As, Alex, Adriana, and myself will be available to answer those and we'll go through them to be able to answer to you um, personally. Great. Right.
Thank you, everyone.